Okay, we stopped here. Text says, and how, how? What's a good way to put this? Marveled at. Okay, and seeing marveled at her with a great wonder, great wonder. In other words, admiring. Thalmazo, which is a verb here, and Thalma, which is his cognate now. Um, Thalmazo has a range of meaning. It, it, it means to be astonished with either a favorable impression or a very unfavorable impression. Here it's favorable. So they're marveling at the whore drunk with the blood of the saints. You could argue that in the background that there's a horror in the marveling. But as you're going to see, um, he, he means a positive view. They wondered at, when they, saw, when they saw her, they wondered at her. And taking their place is John, because this is actually in the first person. And when I saw her, I wondered at her. Now, he's not necessarily approving. He's kind of shocked, actually. And the reason why he's shocked is because of the name that the angel had told him was the name of this whore. Church. Babylon the Great. Mother of harlots. Mother of adulteries. Mother of fornications. It has all those meanings. With the tone, you, you, you get the harlot connotation. Mother of harlots. All the harlots. And all of the abominations of the world. Church? Church is, the, is being depicted here? So, John, playing human, your typical human, is wondering at the sight of her greatly, with a great wonder. And he's shocked. He's astonished. Okay? The period of this is 385. Okay? And, it, and I go through the history and the stuff that happens. How it gets worse with each succeeding emperor and more particularly the Byzantine okay although it's bad on both sides you still got two Romes at this point because you've had two Romes ever since New Rome was founded here so you have a split in Rome but they're both trying to join religion to state and they're it's, they're like competing who's going to be more evil to our fellow Christians Who's going to be more evil to the pagans and the Jews? Anti-Semitism really takes off during this time. Okay, and so for the particulars, you can read that link. Because that goes through that, that period of time. That's what people were doing during that time, too. They were marveling with either astonishment, shock, negative, or marveling, astonishment, shock, positive. And depending on how apostate you were and whether you agreed with the, the apostasy that was in, in charge. Because it was, it was the rulers working with the, the, the clergy to do all this persecution. Alright. So, John's marveling is indicative of what, was hap what would happen in history at that point. Here we're talking about the period from 372 to 385. I probably ought to make that smaller. Okay. So, John is like the poster boy for it. Well, in John's case, specifically John, he's upset. This is church. Church is the whore. He would have expected it to be the pagans. No, it's church. Okay. Now, it could be, it, it's not necessarily true that he didn't understand. He obviously did. It's not necessarily true that he didn't know it was going in this direction because he writes that way in 1 John that there are a lot of antichrists out. Even when he's writing. And he's writing 1 John in 80 AD. He's writing this nine years, almost nine years later. And 
So, you know, you got a wide range of reactions in thaumato, which is a verb here. And you had a wide range of reactions actually historically occurring during those years in the future of when he's doing his thaumato, they're doing theirs. Okay? So it's like an overall statement. Since it's covering the whole period of time, there's not just one syllable like before. It's the whole period. So I just put the word evil as the pun word. Because it's the evil of being in wonder at all. What you should be doing, and this is what Matthew 24 told you by this date, if you've seen the Matthew 24 videos I've done so far, get out of Dodge. Leave. Okay? Just get out. Go away. They're going to turn you over to the synagogues. They're going to turn you over to kings and leaders. They're going to put you to death. Yeah, that's all going on right here. All going on right here. Started to go on under Constantine himself. Okay? And you can read it in those laws right there. But this is after 364 now. Now we're getting past 364. That same link has other links that will go past 364 so you can read the laws and how they get worse. Okay? But I also summarize it here. And here. Okay? It gets, it's unbelievable how bad it gets. And they, they codify them in the laws that deprive Jews of property, don't allow Jews to marry, they're not allowed to speak about their Judaism. I mean, it's just every kind of bad law you want to mention. So I just call it evil. Okay? I, there's not one particular word to go, to go for here. Okay? Now, it goes back to being funny again. I mean, biting funny. Theodosius has two kids. One named Arcadius, and then a lot later on he has another son named Honorius. And in 393, he declares that his newly born son Honorius is going to inherit the western Italy, Rome, and Arcadius will rule the eastern New Rome. Okay? Two years later, he conveniently dies at Dia. I didn't have enough room to put all that in this on the same line. So, uh, you have to start to look up here, and then you come back down here. And Dia. Dia is a preposition. It means through or because of. Well, through him, our two sons and the empire is going to split two years later right here when he dies. So because of him it splits, and through him it splits into his two sons. Now, is that clever or what? Again, this is a sign that yes, God is actually the guy that gave John these words to write, and yes, we have the same words he gave John to write. Because the people who copied this stuff didn't know what I'm telling you. Even though they had the same words... And they copied them down over and over and over. It never occurred to them to count the syllables and match it up with history, which is occurring as they were copying. How could they not know? Well, maybe some of them did, but I have no proof. Not yet. But see, because of Theodosius, the first Theodosius, through the first Theodosius, the empire splits into East and West Rome, and that was the very best thing that could have happened to such an apostate group. Because by splitting between East and West, now there's more freedom for Bible to be preserved. Because when you got one sect of Christians persecuting another sect of, sect of Christians, then my sect of Christians has its Bibles destroyed by your sect of Christians, and how many Bibles are going to be left? No matter how much copying is done. You see the point? And nobody even was reading the Greek anymore except in the East, except in Byzantium, but they were still persecuting each other in Byzantium. Big persecutions going on. Three or four different definitions of God and three or four defini different definitions over how Trinity worked. My definition is better than your definition, so I should kill you and confiscate and, you know, burn your Bible because I don't know what you've done to it. That's what was going on. Meanwhile, this is where the story gets really funny. 
it says through which so what well, it's actually saying why because of what are you amazed shocked because of what are you amazed or shocked there should be a what we would call a question mark there I will show you ego ero swa soy sorry it's not French <laughs> ego ero soy I will show you the see here we got mystery again okay of the whore woman technically speaking I will show you the mystery of her and of the beast on which she's riding or the beast carrying her okay now it's not a direct tie to any particular word but at 317 here the end of it is Jerome he finishes his Vulgate in the West because of the split alright because of Sidia because of because of the split Western Rome decided well, we don't like Greek text we're just going to use our Latin translation and that Latin translation was pretty bad Jerome figured that out at about this point maybe a little bit before and he hightails it down to Alexandria Egypt and other places you know and he's he decides he's gonna learn Hebrew he's gonna he's gonna compare the Latin with the Greek and he's gonna redo the translation he was actually commissioned to do that by one of the uh, Latin popes they started to actually have real popes at that point so he was commissioned to do that so he goes down to do that and this is also the time of Augustine and he's writing back and forth with Augustine while he does his translation and Augustine's arguing with him that well our old Latin's good enough we don't need a new translation if you do a new translation it differs from the old Latin translation I'm going to have no end of arguments with the Jews because Augustine was anti-Semitic and Jerome was like well no don't you care about what the Word of God says and whether it's properly translated Augustine didn't care Augustine just wanted to, you know, win the debates. Okay, Augustine was not a good guy. I don't care what anybody says, just go read him. He's full of bombast. And go read his letters to Jerome, and you won't think highly of him afterwards. You'll be shocked. Dalmazzo. Yeah. The angel is showing us through these timelines. Okay. Because the angel knows what's going to happen. The angel knows that. Because it, this is all... These are all clauses. He's quoting the angel. Okay? So Jerome, and you can read what Jerome did, everything he did, right there, 4thCentury.com. They have a copy of what Jerome's writings were. You can also go to NewAdvent.org. It's all over the place what Jerome wrote. He finishes his Vulgate at the end of this period, which is 405 AD. Okay? I forget, this also is benchmarking something in Paul, but I don't remember what the verse is. I'll have to stick it in. Of the fake church, of the woman, see, mother church. Okay, by the time you get here, that's 414. Okay, now here's our next ha-ha. Arcadius is ruling Eastern Rome. Eastern Rome is, is called to us today Byzantium Byzantine Empire okay New Rome we called then co got to be called Constantinople and finally today is called Istanbul under the Turks he, Arcadius who was one of the, the Eastern Rome Emperor he dies right here and his death this, see, this again proves that it's God's doing writing this soul counts everybody at the time he died considered his death a mystery they didn't know how he died obviously somebody did it's a question whether he died naturally or whether he was poisoned or whatever happened his death was a mystery that's what they all kept saying his death is a mystery a mystery a mystery not knowing that that very soul for his death was in Revelation 17. 
Because remember, the people compiling all this stuff about him at the time, they could read Greek. They had revelation. They had never dawned on them to, to count the syllables. And had they, had they counted the syllables, they would have thought, oh, wait a minute, Arcadius is dying right here. God is making fun of him. Yep. Now, he has a niece, or, or, or I forget, sister-in-law, or I forget how it works. Anyway, there's this young kid. Her, she's 14 or 15 years old. Her name is Polkaria, and she has a brother. The brother will end up becoming emperor next. She's like 14, and she is so full of herself, it's not funny. She declares herself to be the new Virgin Mary at this point, by the end, by 414. She convenes council, she schools her brother, and she d decides who, what her brother's going to do and say and think. Okay, and this brother's name is Theodosius II. And I don't, I thought I put him, maybe I didn't. Theodosius II. Do I have the link for him here? I must have used it already. I'll have to find it. Anyway, his name is Theodosius II, and you'll be able to just Google on that. All right. She runs his life. She picks out his bride. She does everything for him, and she declares herself to be a perpetual virgin, the reincarnation, as it were, of Mary Theotakos, and she is one prime bitch. And, of course, because she is, she lives for a really long time, and Theo is going to die relatively soon, as we're going to see. So the mystery of the woman, you know, the woman, yeah, Pokeria. Her, the name Polcare Pulcher, means beautiful, but her soul is ugly, so I call her Ugly Polcaria. Okay, Polcare means pretty in Latin. Okay, she's ugly, and there's it ends with the word, the woman. Yeah, the woman right here, Polcaria. Okay. So, and that when you, uh, let's see, what verse is this? Seven, seven, verse seven, for harlot woman. Here we go, verse seven. See there? Here's a note, and that takes you to the woman. See? It tags Polkaria. All right. And she was up here earlier. See, these are all explanations of what I'm telling you in the video. They go through it more. I, I've got a link to her in here somewhere. I'll have to find it. But, you can just search on Polkaria also. Okay? You can read a lot more about her in there. I got links to her there. Okay, or there. Any of, any of these links will take you. Well, that one won't. Okay, that one won't. Any of the ones that Ephesians 1 reparse will t has links on her. But the woman, see, the woman. And that's when she starts her little rise as I'm, I'm the new Mary. So the woman is Pulcheria. Alright, see how, how biting and, and specific this is? So Arcadius dies as a mystery. Yeah, because he was supposed to be ruler of the church. But he, but the Bible was a mystery to him. And then this girl, the girl, at the end, Deskunekos, decides she's going to be the new Virgin Mary. You know, the whole Mary cult had started by that time, and she really ramped it up. Okay, so, and the beast who's carrying her, Okay. All right, well, now we get to the other side of the other Rome, okay? And at carrying, the last word of carrying, bastan, bastazontos, bastazontos, that, tos, just the, 
end of a participle. That's Honorius, see? Honorius, the guy in whose honor the empire was split, he dies. <coughs> So he's not carrying anything anymore, and nobody's carrying him except to the grave. See how satirical that is? And he was playing the same games. I mean, Western Rome was playing the same games, but it's really on its last legs right now. Okay. So now we get into the death throes of Western Rome. Tadeka Kerata. The Ten Horns. Okay, seven heads, seven mountains, seven heads. Okay, the beast, which has seven heads and ten horns. Okay, this specifically takes you to the end of Ephesians 1, 3, 4, 3, 14. I can't prove it for sure. But it looks to me like this is being benchmarked to remind you to look at the end of Ephesians 1.14. Because what that basically is appending a sort of like epilogue. You know, when you're reading this, the beast has seven heads and ten horns. You're thinking, wow, this is church. This is nasty with seven heads and ten horns. This is how bad church is. Okay, but... Ephesians 1.14 basically tells you that God's going to turn it into his glory. Whenever he tags Ephesians or Matthew or whatever at the end of one of his phrases, it's like an antithical, antiphonal response to how you consider the verse. And this is one of those two, but I'm not sure um, how, why he's linking it to this part the ta of hepta why why there why didn't he break it someplace else why didn't he reword this so I don't know seven is the number of promise and the number of perfection maybe that's it because at the end of Ephesians 1 14 is the promise that you're going to become the you know the the you're going to become God's glory it's really very shocking in Ephesians 1 14 I did videos on that years ago. Um, see my GGS 10 videos in Vimeo, Paul Meter GGS 10. Or look at them in, in YouTube. The GGS 10 series. Um, so, I mean, basically at this point, Paul Curry is still alive. Alright. Honorius dies. Theodosius hasn't died yet, but he's going to die soon. And this is where it stops being tied to Ephesians because Ephesians ends it there. Okay, that's about all I can say about it. But the rules and everything else I've been saying, it's all getting worse. And that's illustrated most markedly right here. Okay, this is this is where Theo dies. Okay. The end of this is 451. 451 is a famous date in history. I mean, but it was prophesied at the time, right here at Ain, for the Council of Chalcedon. The Council of Chalcedon caused a great deal of warfare, bloodshed, and death of Christians against Christians. Wh which Christians were for Chalcedon and which ones were against it? It's, it was a pivotal way of Christians hating Christians that occurred. And our girl Polkaria started one about 20 years earlier and this is the outgrowth of what she started she's still alive but she didn't cause this particular council okay now look look at the wording here the beast you saw was was and the next phrase of course says and not is in other words, it was in the past, but not now is the next phrase. Now, how can that be? Well, first of all, there was no church. So 
So it is not now at the time that he's speaking to John. There was no fake church beast yet. It was just getting started. But it was in the empires of the past a long attempt. That's why the word Babylon is used. That was a, an attempt to unite church and state. And remember Daniel 2 and 7 where it talks about the, the head of gold and the, the chest of, of silver and the, the loins and thighs of, of uh, bronze and then the feet of clay. Okay, that's the man of time. But we're past that. We're at the clay part. We're at the feet part. That's why he's saying ten horns. Because you got ten toes. And you walk. And that's a kind of horn too. It's a kind of power. The power to walk and to beat up somebody. You have to be able to walk to do that. Okay, and you have to have a head. And he already explained the seven heads in Daniel 9, 7. It was ten. It becomes seven because one of the one of the three ends up as usurping power over the other two. All right. So the beast that you saw was, in other words, it's a recurring phenomenon of history. But that was before church. So is not now because in 88 A.D. church church hadn't risen to unite church and state with Rome. It hadn't happened yet. But prophetically, this is about when it does happen, what is it going to be like? Okay? And what it's going to be like is you got one group of Christians saying, Well, we got the right doctrine and you don't agree with our doctrine, so you're heretics and we should kill you. Which is basically how history goes for the next thousand, almost two thousand years. And the Council of Chalcedon is really what, what um, sort of like polarized the East and the West from each other in their doctrinal views. Okay, the East just didn't agree with the Council of Chalcedon and the West did. And then it was a question of would, would the Byzantine emperors try to unite with the West? And sometimes they did. But a lot of times they didn't. And they would fight with each other. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but when you all got common enemies, at least you should get the, along with each other to defeat your common enemies. But they wouldn't even do that. And that's why, why Western Rome falls, which is happening now just 20 years after this point. Okay. Theo II dies a year afterwards. Now get this. A year before. This is... Was. It's 451. I'm not sure when in 450 that Theo died, but if he dies toward the end of the year, then this characterizes him. If he dies late in 450. If he died early in 450, look at the other kind of satire. Okay? The beast which you saw. If that's where Theo dies, he ain't seeing nothing. This is a very common thing in Mark. Mark uses C verbs. See this, see that, see the other thing. And every time he uses some version of the word see, and this is from Horao, every time he uses some version of the word see, it's marking the death of a Byzantine emperor. So it's pretty likely that since Mark did that, and you can track it, I'm doing that in the Mark videos, if you haven't seen them already. <clears throat> I've been posting them. Um... Theodosius II ain't seeing nothing. So, John knows that Mark is making that little game out of the Greek verb horao, and he's making the same game right here. Take your pick. Either he's playing on Theodosius dying at Ain, which means was, no longer, or he's playing it like Mark does on the last syllable of Ides. Well, you ain't seeing nothing. Every time there's a C verb, Mark marks somebody, some emperor who dies. So he was, but is not now, no matter what you want to call it, whether you're saying that the satire is at here or the satire is at here. So I didn't mark it on Ides, I marked it at Hain, 
because I think he dies late in the year. I might refine that later in later versions of this in the Word doc, in the PDF. Okay, so you see how, how biting? Either way. And of course, Chalcedon at the end, the beast that was treating it like it has no value. It is not a value. It is dead. In other words, it's a beast. It's dead. Has nothing to do with God. But of course, it's claiming to have everything to do with God. Oh, we're the right interpretation of Scripture. No, you're just totally apostate. Even when they get it right, they're wrong. Now, Council of Chalcedon has some doctrinal statements in it that are right. But they shouldn't have been making them like that. They had no right to determine and dictate what the right is over others. So they're a beast that was. Might as well be dead, even while it's alive. See, even if you got the right the right doctrinal answers that doesn't give you the right to impose it on somebody yeah you can expatiate on it but you don't have the right to impose it as a matter of state and they're doing it as a matter of state the rulers of the Byzantine Empire and the rulers of the Western Empire were imposing what the council determined as a matter of state on their subjects and that's why there's a split because the Byzantines don't agree with Chalcedon. Okay. And that's why there's a split. And thank God there is. Because 20 years from this. Because this was basically Western Rome. That wanted this. 20 years from here. There ain't going to be no Western Rome no more. So was. Ain. See it's got all those multiple entendres. And I've thrown a lot at you. So I'll let you go for now. And I'll come back in the next increment.